Hello, and welcome to the breakdown of my Mark II Sonic Screwdriver. This will go over some of the parts and process that goes into me crafting a Sonic Screwdriver out of hobby supply parts. It starts here with my Arduino prototyping board. I take various tones, sound, I like to listen to other people's codes and, you know, kind of write my own off theirs to make my own unique sounds. And then once I get something that I'm happy with or sounds somewhat sonic-y, that's when I program that sound onto an ATtiny85, which is very small and easy to conceal in just about anything. And then I go to work on my plumbing supplies to make the body for it. Let me take this one apart and I'll kind of show you the individual pieces. The bottom here is just a pipe cap that has a brass tube glued into it that fits the inner diameter of the uh, brass nipple here and the outer diameter of the uh, brass tube that's you know, holding my battery compartment. The top is exactly the same. Slides out like that. This is a flare and a reducer nut that I kind of just took a file to make the you know dog collar into. And then I sand out the threads of the very top so that I can fit one of these oops, aquarium beads into to make the emitter. I was a lot happier with the uh, glass beads making kind of a full emitter as opposed to the partial one that I did on the original Mark II and on the Mark I for that matter. And now the body itself I've taken to sanding like the bottom ridges into and I take a Dremel router bit and just carve this out and paint it whatever color I want. This one I did silver and blue to kind of look more like the David Tennant version. Here you can see these speaker holes that I cut just under the switch so they're always kind of concealed and it'll get slightly louder as you slide it out. And the bottom compartment here isn't glued it's just tight fit. See the speaker holes and where it slides over the switch. And there's all of the internal electrics except for the LED. There's the AT Tiny 85 which only drives the sound. The uh, LED is actually just hardwired to the batteries or to the switch in the batteries. The speaker is actually gutted out of a set of earbuds. I just buy the cheap gas station or drugstore earbuds for five bucks and there you go, two speakers. So the LED is actually an 8mm blue like you see on the prototyping board here. In the green version it's an 8mm white because I have just a green cap and I'm not really happy with the green LEDs I've gotten so far. Some of the board mount ones are actually very green but some of the green diffused ones come off as more yellow and they're not really super bright like the blues or the whites or the reds. Anyway the uh, LED leads come down to the switch, the positive goes to the switch, and the positive off the uh, AT Tiny goes to the switch. And the negative comes down into a resistor that I've got covered in black electrical tape, and that joins the negative off the speaker and the AT Tiny into one wire that I run down to the batteries. So I leave the batteries exposed so that if I need to change them, I just peel off the little tape I have slide off the magnets, take the batteries out, tape four more LR44 batteries together, stick them between the wires, put the magnets on, and then kind of tape everything back up. Then this slides right back on, line it up over the tube and line it up with the switch, push firmly, and there you go. The slide button itself is crafted out of, I think, eighth inch brass plate and there's a piece of brass channel in there so that I can kind of glue it to the tube underneath. The acrylic rod is half inch acrylic rod which is oversized from the prop but it fits my plumbing supplies and it comes to you kind of frosty I take a torch heat it up so it gets very clear and then I drill a channel out in the center to make the pass for the LEDs and I find the easiest way to put mine back together is to slide the top in first, press firmly, slide it all the way in, take the brass pipe and fit it around the other brass pipe into the body and kind of give it a twist. The reason I don't sand off the hex head of the bottom is so it doesn't roll too much. I can actually kind of you know, set it any way I want it 
and it's balanced so I can stand it up. And there you go. That's how I create the Mark II Sonic Screwdriver. Thanks for listening.